We do as you tell us, we'll fight. No. Soldiers deserve soldiers, sir. The veterans you see standing before you here have been through all kinds of heavy shit. And they've always got the job done. Now, your new soldiers, these hot shots, how much action have they seen? And are they battle tested? Improved. Out. In every way possible. You see, your old ones here, they're selected at birth. And my new ones, we're talking recombination. They're practically manufactured using DNA profiles and some manipulation. <laughs> Your men are obsolete. You'll write this up as a training accident, and you'll make sure these bodies get dumped a long way from here. How many of them are there? There is one man, unarmed. How could there only be one? How could he get here? You're not a deserter, are you, Sergeant? I was replaced. By a better soldier, sir. You set up unmanned monitoring stations here, 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 here. Let's say we do encounter activity. Miners, refugees of some sort. Well, we won't. If we do, they will be officially classifiable as hostiles. Soldier was released in 1998 and was directed by Paul W.S. Anderson. It had Kurt Russell in the lead role and he received nearly $20 million for appearing in it. The budget was very large for the time at around $50 million. The screenplay was written by David Webb Peoples, who had worked on rewrites of Ridley Scott's Blade Runner and had success with his script for Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven and Terry Gilliam's Twelve Monkeys. David Peoples claimed Soldier was set in the same universe as Blade Runner and being sort of a side sequel to the 80s classic. But there is barely any connection between them. The subject matter of creating life and manipulating DNA is the only obvious link. Supposedly there is one of the spinners, the flying cars can be seen on the planet with all the other junk, but I haven't managed to spot it. It's supposedly visible in the first 20 minutes. Soldier completely bombed in the USA and only recouped back 14 million and went straight to home video in the UK and many other territories making it the most expensive director video release ever. There are many factors that played a part in the movie's downfall. Paul Anson was not happy with the marketing campaign for this movie. Warner Brothers tried to aim the movie at teenagers and pushing it to be more of an action based feature. But if you watch it, you'll notice there is barely any action till the end. The theatrical trailer has a number of scenes that aren't in the film. There's a space battle scene, which was clearly made up for the trailer because it doesn't fit in the movie and the story doesn't allow for any such sequence. Soldier was shot in LA. Paul Anson wanted to shoot a lot of it on location to give a sense of scope to the movie. His idea was to homage Lawrence of Arabia but be set in space. But due to the bad weather that year they had to shoot most of it on sound stages at Warner Brothers which restricted his visual design. You only really get a view of the wasteland of the planet Arcadia by the digital map paintings which extend the world and everything is unfortunately limited to a number of set pieces, which are large in scale, but the world comes across as very small and you don't get a good feel of the geography of the locations. It seems a bit jumbled up. Kurt Russell actually broke his ankle very early on into the production, so the shooting schedule had to be changed. The final scene shot of Kurt was him actually running at the start of the film. An interview at the time, Kurt Russell discusses his injury. I actually broke my left ankle and then I then I tore my. Uh, Have you ever done that before, or anything right. like that? Well, actually, I, in ba when I was playing baseball, I broke my left ankle three times, so it was mm. kind of prone to that. Um, my my right foot just was an accident on the set that just was sort of, uh, you know, a mistake on a few people's part, especially my own. And um, that's what happens sometimes. Uh, unfortunately, 
you, you know, you can't cover yourself every time or you're not sharp enough to or, I don't know, you fall asleep or you get a little lazy or you get lackadaisical and when you're doing movies like this, that, that's, that's the, it can be dangerous and, and most of all it can be harmful to the, to the to the project because if you can't shoot, absolutely, you know, you're, 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 you're a lot of money. Yeah, you know, so you don't. So we were fortunate in that. Um, Glued you back together. We, yeah, I was able to just keep on going. Kurt Russell spent 18 months getting into shape for the role, and during that time, Paul Anson went off and made *The Red Horizon*. You can tell Kurt has made a great effort. He is in fantastic shape and spends most of his time, unfortunately, just acting with his eyes, because his character barely speaks. I think roughly he says 104 words throughout the movie. You have two of Paul Anson's regular actors, Jason Isaacs and Sean Pertry. Both are a joy to watch, especially Jason Isaacs, as the power-obsessed and oftenly cowardly Colonel McKem. Gary Busey plays Captain Church, who is extremely loyal to his troops and plays by the rules. He perfectly fits the role and basically plays the voice of reason to Colonel McKem, who genuinely ignores his advice. Jason Scott Lee, who many will recognise from Dragon the Bruce Lee's story, plays the best of the new unit of troops. Like Kurt's character, he barely talks, which is a huge shame, but as usual, he's very confident when it comes to the fight scenes. In the near future, as part of a new military recruitment and training program, a group of infants are selected at birth to be raised as soldiers. Undergoing extreme mental and physical training, they become void of any emotions with no understanding of anything except military routine and war. A priority of the conditioning is that these soldiers are forbidden to speak unless spoken to, and to address whoever they're speaking to, women included as Sir. At age 38, Todd is a hardened veteran of many battles, but he and his unit are about to be replaced. Colonel McKem introduces a new group of genetically engineered soldiers, designed with superior physical attributes and a complete lack of emotions, except aggression. Todd's unit commander, Captain Church, insists on testing the new soldier's abilities against his own, but Todd, the unit's best soldier, is no match for Kane 607. In the final trial, a fight between Kane and three old soldiers, two of Cos's comrades are killed, though Todd manages to gouge out one of Kane's eyes before he is defeated. Todd seemingly dies when he falls from a great height, but the body of a dead soldier cushions his fall, and he is simply knocked unconscious. McKem orders their bodies dumped like garbage, and the remaining old soldiers are demoted to menial support roles. Todd and his dead comrades are dumped on the surface of Arcadia 234, a waste disposal planet with dangerously high wind velocities. Though badly injured, Todd limps his way to a colony of humans who crash landed there 12 years earlier and have managed to survive and build a society from the planet's mountain of trash. Though they try to make him welcome, Todd has difficulty adapting to the community due to his extreme conditioning. Todd's prior training of not speaking unless spoken to and deliberately stunted social skills in general make it difficult for him to answer questions in anything more than short replies and actually initiating a conversation is impossible for him. Many of the settlers are afraid of him, but he is sheltered by a settler named Mace and his wife Sandra. Todd develops a silent rapport with the couple's mute son, Nathan, who has been traumatised mentally and physically by a snake bite. In a subsequent conflict with a curled snake, Todd teaches Nathan how to face it down and strike it back to protect himself. However, his parents misinterpret this lesson, unsure of how to deal with Todd's apparent instability. Todd soon begins to experience flashbacks from his time as a soldier, and mistakes one of the colonists for an enemy nearly killing him. The settlers decide that Todd is too dangerous to live among them, so they give him supplies and order him to leave. Outside the colony, he sheds tears. He is confused, not understanding what they are, implying that this is the first time that he has cried. The new genetically engineered soldiers arrive on a training exercise since the planet is listed as uninhabited. Colonel McKem decides that the colonists' presence is unlawful and as practice orders his troops to slaughter them. The score was composed by Joel McNeely, who provided many scores to Disney films, but has provided scores to theatrical summer movies such as The Avengers, which everyone knows was a huge flop. He collaborated on Air Force One with Jerry Goldsmith, and the soundtrack to Soldier does have action cues that sound familiar to the Air Force One score. Joel McNeely was not happy with the soundtrack release of Soldier. It only has 30 minutes of music available. It had to be released before he had even finished recording the full score. So there is a lot of material missing. The composer felt a lot of his best work was left out. No complete score is available, but the composer is aware that the fans want to hear his complete work to Soldier. If you visit the composer's website at joelmcneely.com, he has uploaded five tracks of unreleased music. Definitely worth a listen. I originally saw Soldier when it hit video in the UK. It was on a cable channel where you can purchase movies for one evening. 
Soldier to me looked interesting so I gave it a go and after watching it I thought it was incredibly dull and boring. It didn't work at all for me and I never watched it again until late last year and recently for this review. On second viewing I found it more enjoyable to watch and in high definition the movie looked really good in terms of its photography and visual effects. The problem with the movie is that the story is very cliched. There isn't much original material in the screenplay, you've seen it all before. Apparently the script was 15 years old by the time they went into production. If this was made in the mid 80s then I'm sure it would have received a better response, but by the late 90s it's very forgettable and won't leave you with a strong lasting impression and you may find it to be a very weak movie. Kurt Russell is a fantastic actor and does his best with what he's got to work with, but he's wasted really. Casting him in a film where he barely talks just seems like a missed opportunity. Soldier was well received when it came to screen tests, especially with older audiences. Women love the connection Kurt has with the child, and by the end of the movie he becomes a sort of father figure to the kid, which I really liked, but it was a shame he didn't show more emotions or speak by the end to show his character had changed. Because Paul Anson had directed Mortal Kombat a few years earlier, the studio wanted to aim it at that demographic, and it ultimately failed because young teenagers didn't like the relationship style of the picture. There is a montage scene of Kurt with the family, and with him trying to fit in, and it does seem kind of forced, and this scene kind of happens too quickly. The end fight battle between Jason Scott Lee and Kurt Russell should have been amazing, but it's very standard. It's okay, but it's not really exciting. There are loads of slow motion shots which drag out the fight. It's confidently staged and choreographed, but doesn't leave you feeling satisfied. There are many fans of this film and they feel it's underrated. I think it's a misunderstood movie. When I was younger, I wasn't a fan of it, but as I got older, I appreciate the film more, but that doesn't mean it's perfect. It's still a ultimately flawed picture, but it didn't deserve the backlash it received at the time. I can recommend Soldier if you know beforehand it's a relationship picture and not just pure action, then I think you'll get some enjoyment out of it. It has a very good cast and should keep you invested in it. If you have seen it and didn't like it, then I completely understand. But if you haven't seen it for a long time, then I suggest you give it another go and hopefully your opinion of it may change for the better. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to gain early access to my retrospective reviews, episodes of Fix It In Post and commentary podcasts, you can pledge to my Patreon. Thank you.